I think there are two sets of risks that we're going to be confronting. One is the, the increased instability that states are going to face as they deal with extreme weather events and a change in climate. That's particularly acute in states with weak governance or, or so-called fragile states. I also think we're going to be facing geopolitical challenges as we see major energy producers, major fossil fuel producers grapple with a significant change to their economy and their position in the world as we navigate through an energy transition. And some of these actors, Russia, Saudi, etc., are not going to take this lying down, and that could create serious instability. I think it's not really the case that NATO is going to be the f lead actor in responding to these issues in fragile states context. NATO is not particularly good at responding to fragile states. Uh, and the interplay between climate change and fragility doesn't really play to NATO's strengths at all. Some NATO countries, of course, will be involved, but NATO is an organization, much less. I do think that as we, as is likely, if we see uh, instability arising from the way the major energy producers handle the energy transition, that that will throw up security challenges that NATO will be more directly involved in. I think it's important as NATO comes to terms with this new agenda that they be confronted with some pretty clear messages about where they do and where they do not have comparative advantages. Uh, I'm skeptical that NATO has a major operational role to play in fragile states. They are not a major uh, direct contributor to climate change policy. Uh, but they can, of course, uh, watch what's happening in terms of new risks. They can watch the geopolitics this very carefully. And in extreme cases, they may well be involved operationally. For now, I think it's much more important they be confronted by the diversity of risks that we're looking at, the diversity of states in which those risks occur, and then have a, a kind of clear way to think about where NATO as an organization adds value and where it doesn't. Well, I think CIPRI has become really the world's leading research institute on the interplay between climate and security, albeit more in the fragile states context than the geopolitical context. And that's got to continue. We're going to see more risks as uh, climate changes more rapidly, uh, as storms increase, as sea level rise increases. And having a, a really world-class research feed into NATO's thinking on this will add real value as they try to figure out where they do and where they don't play a role.